Hey everyone, it's time for another absolutely thrilling uh, installment of uh, Intro to R. So I hope you're ready to go because I'm pretty ready to go. Uh, today we're going to be talking about vectors in R. So that's pretty exciting. Um, here are some learning objectives that we're going to cover today. And uh, we should go ahead and get started. So boot up your R studio and get ready to go. Just as a reminder, um, it's really much easier if you are writing stuff in a script as opposed to practicing stuff in the command line because you can uh, you know do your uh lecture 1.6 vectors and r um write notes and all sorts of stuff and again if you hit this run uh, button it will run the line that you're on uh, Remember what it is, it's a command button return if you'd like to uh, run a specific line. It's going to hop you to the next line, but uh, it's pretty useful in terms of um, running in uh, specific lines in a script if you want to do that. And again, this uh, you can save the script and uh, write some notes under it and things like that to have a record of what's going on. Um, I recommend that as opposed to going uh, through on command line just because it gives you a nice record. And if something doesn't work, you can write the code there. If it gives an error, you can write a little bit more about it. So it, it becomes a little bit more of a um, uh, a better record of what you're doing in class uh, as opposed to other stuff. The other stuff can be history. You know, you can see me doing all sorts of history stuff uh, here, all the commands that I've uh, entered in here, which is fine too. Uh, but uh, scripting is a little bit easier because you don't get all those repeated uh, stuff and you can give some context and comments to those, uh, to those things and errors if you want to do that. So let's get go ahead and get started. So here's a question for you. In physics, what's the difference between a vector and a scalar? Um, I know, oh no, uh, you thought maybe that you would never have to deal with physics again, or if you haven't already dealt with, dealt with physics, like, you know, why am I asking you about physics questions, right? But it's really uh, quite important for understanding kind of what's going on in terms of how R is organizing data. So the value in physics, remember, a scalar is uh, going to be a number. So this V is uh, a scalar of three. Um, and a vector is going to be V uh, with that has a little bit more information, right? Um, the scalar just has a magnitude, so it's like a, a number that's associated with it, um, but no direction. And the vector in physics has a magnitude and a direction that we can usually, usually you use some kind of coordinate system with it. Um, there's an angle A here associated with this vector, uh, but, and the magnitude is three. And of course, this can be written also in terms of uh, the angle away from some coordinate system, um, but it can also be uh, uh, written in terms of components. So uh, if you have an X and Y coordinate system here, X is uh, the horizontal and Y is the vertical, you can write this as a component of, of v, v along that X axis and also V along that Y axis. So you have two numbers, V sub X and V sub Y. Now, if you uh, want to know that in terms, in relation to the magnitude, you can um, figure out V sub X as the magnitude times cosine A, so three times cosine the angle A. Uh, for V sub Y, the, the uh, kind of inverse is, well, not inverse, but um, the opposite is true. So uh, the magnitude times sine of A, the angle A, um, three times sine of A, okay? So those are just component systems. It's a way to break up that magnitude and also add a direction to it. So, um, and you can see that it's listed as a number comma number, right? As this vector. So often vectors are used in terms, it can give an X component, a Y component, and even more C, you know, dimensional uh, dimensional components beyond that. Uh, so how does this representation differ in R? Uh, so here's the values in physics that we've already talked about. Uh, vectors in R are a little bit different, right? Scalar, uh, you can have a number, okay? Um, and a vector, you have uh, a, more than one number, okay? Um, actually, but vectors, if you look at uh, these values, um, vectors are in R are all numbers. Uh, so a scalar is just a vector with one position um, in R. So there are no real scalar numbers. Um, there's just vectors uh, that have different lengths. Okay, so the scalar three um, in R is just gonna be a vector with length one and this vector V 
uh, v dot vector is going to be a vector with two positions, one and two. Okay, so all numbers are vectors in R. Um, so the properties of vectors in R, so R have these basic properties. Uh, vectors are a special type of an array made of integer, numeric, or logic, true, false elements that we talked about last time in our data, top, uh, data um, types lecture. Uh, so uh, this vector can be uh, positions one, seven, and nine. And these are integers. Uh, anything with a character is not going to be it. Uh, uh, not going to be a vector. We we'll call this an array. And the the difference is kind of subtle. It's not really important that you know that. But um, for our purposes, uh, we're going to call vectors things with uh, integers, numerics, or logicals. Um, so vectors can be one or more uh, elements in length, but must be one dimensional. Okay, so a vector, this is a vector, it has one dimension along this axis, but not a vector would be a matrix, which is a different type of data. Uh, and that has two dimensions, one uh, cross sort of horizontal and one dimensional, uh, one um, vertical. So this is a matrix, it's not a vector. We're going to talk about that later uh, as a separate type of data. So in terms of making vectors in R, um, we have a couple functions that are really useful. First of all, the concatenate function that we've used actually several times already. It's the C with parentheses. Um, so here, arguments are objects, uh, and they can be bound together to create one vector. Um, you can have an unlimited number of these arguments, uh, but they have to be of the same data type, so the same data class. Okay. So what happens when you make a vector? Um, this vector that we've written out in fancy, uh, try to construct this vector in R and see what happens. Um, it really doesn't like to mix data types in array. So if you try to do this, V. Uh, C1 flower 9. Um, what ends up happening is this, right? You get a character array of 1 as a character, flower as a character, and 9 as a character. So uh, it's uh, a little bit confused about what you want to do because it's giving different data types and it really wants you to only use one data type, one data type um, uh, in each array or each vector. Okay. So that's important to note. Um, Another way of uh, making vectors, often you want a sequence of numbers and you don't want to type one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four. It's much faster to use sequencing. So the simple sequence is with the seq, seq function. So SEQ, um, you can do a vector sequence with SEQ, one to 10, and that will give you uh, integers one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? Uh, so the arguments here are, uh, so the one is from, the 10 is two, and that is actually the same thing. You can do simple sequences also just with a colon. So you can do the exact same thing, vector two with um, a colon one, two, 10, and that will give you the exact same vector, uh, just a different way, okay? And again, this is two colon from colon two. Uh, with the simple sequences. Um, sequence, you can, uh, for, but for sequence, you're like, okay, well, you have two ways of doing something. Why would you need to bother with that? Well, with the sequence function, you can do some other fancy stuff with that as well. So you can um, specify a step size instead of just, you know, having integers, maybe you want a numeric with like half a um, 0.5 steps. Uh, this is how you do it. So again, you have a from is your first argument, two is your second argument, and by is your third argument. Um, so that ends up looking like this uh, sequence one to 10 by 0.5. Okay, so now when you say back three, you have uh, one, 1 1.5, two, 2.5, so on until 10. Okay, um, I'll just note uh, that again, we're using here lazy evaluation, but you can also do seek from equals one to equals 10 by equals 0. 0.5. That's uh, equivalent way of doing it. It's, uh, probably even a little bit better because it's a little bit clearer about what's going on. Um, you can also do a sequence with a specific output length. So maybe you don't really want, uh, you don't really care what the step size is, but you just need that vector. <laughs> to like be a really specific length <laughs> when it goes out. And so you can do that by uh, uh, specifying the length out. So seek one to 10 and the length dot out 
is going to be 50. You'll notice, okay, so now when you say VEC4, you'll have all of this, and it's picking the step size for you so that you get an even sequence of 50 numbers between 1 and 10. Um, so you'll notice that I have to specify this argument too, because if I just use 50, it's going to give me probably somewhere, actually, it's probably just going to do like 1 and then 10, because uh, 1 to 10 by 50 step sizes, it doesn't really make sense. Um, but the length out is just, uh, you have to specify that because um, the lazy evaluation doesn't quite work when you get into sort of the non-typical uh, ordering of the arguments there. Okay, again, that's from to, and then the total length of the output vector is there. Okie dokie. So um, now you've done sequences. Those are all different numbers. Maybe we want to just do repetitions. This is often quite useful when you're trying to plot things, uh, when you're trying to set up different vectors, and you need the same value for every single uh, vector for a while. So rep is a fu function that helps you out a lot with this. Okay, so if you figure out how to do rep, your life is really a lot simpler <laughs> when you when you end up doing this type of thing. So you can repeat a number into a longer vector. So uh, we'll do a rep vec, rep one comma ten. Rep one comma ten. Okay, so now if we look at rep back, we'll see uh, 10 ones, right? So what this is doing is the number to copy is the first, uh, and the times to copy it is the second argument. Um, you can also repeat an object into a longer vector. So if you want to create a, a vector vec1, so we're creating this vec1 with our concatenate. So it's 1, 8, 10, and 3. Okay, you can repeat this into a longer vector by specifying the number of times you'd like this to repeat. So the vector to copy and the number of times you'd like to copy this. This, by the way, also works with all sorts of different array stuff. It's not just numeric vectors or anything like that. So times equals four. And rep back two is going to look like this. One, eight, ten, three, one, eight, ten, three, one, eight, ten four times okay so it's this this vector just pasted together um four times in a row all right it's pretty easy so but if you'd like to repeat a, an object in a longer vector but you can do it by element too which is kind of neat uh so you can do rep back three and rep oh so good we're going to repeat the vec one which is this one eight ten three we're going to do it three times and each is going to be two. So each time is going to be two. Um, so then when you look for rep back th three, you're going to see each one, uh, each element is going to be repeated twice, then it moves to the next element and repeats that twice. And it's going to keep doing that for three times. Okay, so you see two, one, 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 three times. Okay, um, eight, 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 three times. This so makes sense to everyone. It's a little bit weird uh, because you're you're doing the times and then the each, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's a little bit on the odd side, but that's okay. And so if you uh, set these numbers appropriately, uh, instead of getting this uh, vec three times in a row, you could get 111, 8888101, and 333. Okay, so those are the outputs there. So, Here's a good check your understanding. Again, I would like you to uh, uh, do these. Go ahead and pause the video. Um, write one line of code to recreate this vector and store it as the object boop. So go ahead and do that. Um, then you want to write a different line of code that reproduces this vector and store it as the object boop too. Um, so what I'm asking you to do is write something that gives you an, uh, an output object that is this sequence of numbers, but then I want you to do it again, okay? <laughs> so I want you to just do it with a different line of code. So repeat the same thing, but do it differently um, using a, a, different, a different line of code. Um, and then I want you to test whether or not boop and boop2 are the same using all dot equal, which is a fun testing thing, which will take two um, objects and just say, are these things the same? Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Do it. Okay, so I assume you've paused the video and you've done that. Uh, in terms of checking your understanding, again, this is a great thing to ask at the beginning of class. You can see that uh, the elements here are repeated one, 
one is repeated three times, two is repeated three times, three is repeated three times. So uh, you kind of get the idea that maybe there's a rep involved there, right? Um, but also it's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's probably a sequence. So yeah, put those together and don't feel bad about just trying to guess things until they work. <laughs> that's totally fine, right? Just guess things until they work and then do it a different way. Uh, uh, to figure it out. Don't get too frustrated with it because sometimes guessing is one good way of learning. Okay, working with vectors. Vectors can be used for a lot of different things in R. Sometimes it's useful to find out information about them though, in case you wanna feed a vector into it as an output or uh, manipulate a vector um, using indexing or something like that, which we'll talk about later. But uh, finding information is really easy with a vector. You can find the length of a vector using the length command. So we'll go over here and find the length of a vector. Let's do rep vec three. So that's 24 elements long. So RepVec3 has 24 elements long. And you also see an environment in our studio that um, it's giving you a lot of information here. It's a numeric, right? The class is numeric. And then it's one to 24 are the number of elements there. Okay, so the length boop is also 40, is 45. Um, when you, you can find out what class of data the vector is with class. So class RepVec3. And you'll see it's numeric. It's also telling you up here in the, in the environment as well. Um, boop is numeric instead of integer. So that's a really interesting question in terms of going back and looking at this. Uh, this is, these are all presumably integers, but then why, if you test boop, why is it uh, numeric instead of an integer? Good question that I'm gonna have you look up. <laughs> and if you can't figure this out again, just ask in class. Uh, so indexing vectors. So indexing vectors, um, indexing refers to the reference of a specific element of a vector, okay? So if I have vec2 and, or vec3 rather, and I have, I want to pull out um, this 4.0, okay? So this 4.0, this it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh element of this vector. So how do I pull out and just as my output, just have that seventh element of that vector um, pull out? That's called indexing. So you would be indexing the seventh position of VEC3, okay? Um, so in terms of blob, we can just do another silly vector blob as a sequence of two to 20 and we're gonna do it by two, so every other number. Okay, so there's blop right here. Um, so you have element numbers, and the reason I did this is because I want these element numbers to be different from um, the actual values of this vector at those positions, okay? So element number one, two, three, four, all the way to the 10, right, um, corresponds with uh, each one of these values of the vector blob, okay? So to pull out one element to reference or index one element, you use square brackets, okay? Why don't you use, why can't you use regular parentheses? Do you know? It's because that calls a function. So if we use regular parentheses, what it's gonna try to do is it's gonna say, hey, I couldn't find function blop because it's looking for a function. Again, using that function, those, those parentheses is, a, is how R knows that you're trying to use a function here, okay? And when you do that, uh, you can't do that. However, the square brackets are very useful for indexing. So now you're saying, okay, within the object blob, I'd like you to find um, this position in blob. And so that's two. So um, blob, the first element, is going to uh, uh, be uh, the value two, and it returns as an output the value two. Um, so if we wanna do this again with blob four, again, it's not looking for the value four here, that's at position two, it's looking at the position four. So if we look at four here, the value is gonna be eight, all right? Um, for a sequence of elements, it's, it's pretty easy as well. You can just put a sequence here and you can do this with actually a sequence function because this just takes an argument right here, uh, uh, an object right here. So you can do six through nine, which again is pulling um, the sixth position all the way through the ninth position, including inclusive of all those positions in between, all right? So it returns these. And you can do multiple elements separately as well. So you can see that we're using the concatenate, concatenate function to create a vector that is 
five, seven, and 10 positions. And then that returns positions five, which is 10, seven, which is 14, and 10, which is 20. Okay, so multiple elements is good. Um, it's really important to use that function. All but one element. So this is a, a really cool thing. Um, also, you can return all the elements except just one, and that's by using a negative sign. Okay, so all of the elements except for element three, you can see that element three is right here, and it's leaving out uh, six in this array and returning for you an output that's nine long. Okay. Okay, so vector i. Vectors have special properties um, in basic math operations, and this is called vectorized calculations. This is one of the really cool things about R. It saves you a huge amount of time because they, uh, R will calculate things on vectors based element-wise. So uh, this is the same in other languages as well. Um, in MATLAB, you actually have to specify, specify an element-wise uh, calculation, but R does that as the default. So if you have blob, uh, which we do, um, you can multiply blob by three, and it will multiply each position in blob by three. Okay, so this is what it ends up being is 6, 12, 18, blah, 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 it, which is 2, 4, 6, 8 times three. Okay, and creates a new vector that's the same length as blob. Uh, all the values just multiplied by three. So that's really neat because it's taking this um, uh, calculation and making it really simple for you, right? Uh, you can do blob plus three as the same thing, blob plus three, and you get each of these elements, two, four, six, uh, on and on, um, added to uh, adding three to them. So it's five, seven, nine, blah, 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 blah. Very cool. Okay, why is this useful? Because otherwise you'd have to do each one of these calculations one by one, um, which is slow. Vectorized functions are very fast. So for the nerds out in the, uh, so for the nerdy geeks who know a lot about R or maybe interested in learning more about R, uh, this, this sort of vectorization takes place in C. Um, so that makes it really, really fast. So it's essentially just a for loop that does these calculations, but since it's taking place in C, compiled in C, uh, it makes it much, much faster than trying to do a for loop in R in terms of optimization. So that's why vector vectorized calculations, it's awesome. Imagine doing this a million times. No, don't do it a million times. Use a vectorized calculation. Okay, when elements are the same length, um, what happens, so I have this uh, blop again that's 10 elements long, and I've uh, selected different um, elements here, 10, uh, so something that I'd like to multiply uh, each different element, or am I multiplying it? I can't remember. Um, it's going to act on these element wise, uh, so element two, or element one here, which is value two, oh, subtract. <laughs> forgot what operation I was going to do with it. But we're going to subtract this element, which is 1.6, and then the next element, and so on and so forth until you get to the end. OK, so uh, what it's doing element-wise, it's going to, to, to act element-wise um, for vectors of the same length. So it's going to be uh, 2 minus this, 4 minus this, 6 minus this, 8 minus this, uh, until it gets to the end. OK, so the last point is 20 minus 0.5, which is 19.5 here in your output. OK, so that should be pretty straightforward. That's for elements. Um, if if uh, the thing that you're subtracting to or, or doing an operation from is the same length as uh, the vector you're out um, you're dealing with. When elements are different length, uh, R does something a little bit strange. Be careful of this, uh, especially when you're trying to um, write scripts and do automated stuff because it's a little bit on the, oh, what's going on side. It can produce some sort of weird results if your vectors are not the same length. So if you uh, subtract a two element, um, uh, subtract a two element vector from blop, uh, which of course is 10 elements long. Um, it, what it does is it essentially just uh, does it element wise, but then just starts to repeat it. <laughs> okay, so it's one, two, one, two, one, two, yeah, until, until the end of time. So what it ends up being is uh, it acts on blop one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, um, until it runs out of position. So it repeats that element, which is like a little bit strange, um, a little bit unexpected behavior. Uh, if you're uh, used to something like MATLAB, which is simply not let you do this because the elements are, <laughs> the vectors aren't the same length, uh, but that's uh, something that R will let you do. It just produces a specific behavior that you should know about. Um, 
Okay, so vectors. Some special functions are special to vectors. Uh, some elements within a vector with sum. So you can sum all these elements and plot together by using sum. Lop. And it sums to 110, which is kind of cool. Okay, so th that's literally just sticking a plus sign in between each of these elements and blob, summing them all together, and then outputting this thing. Okay, um, you can multiply the elements together. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but hey, you never know. Uh, with prod, so this is stands for product, right? Um, so if you do prod block, then you get all of this, which is essentially instead of a plus, you're just adding a multiply sign, um, multiplication sign in between each element and uh, taking that product, okay? You can calculate the mean of elements in a vector with mean, okay? So the mean of blob is 11, and you can calculate the standard deviation of the elements uh, in the vector with uh, SD, which is the standard deviation, 6.055301, okay? So check your understanding again. Um, the vector blippy has 12 elements. Okay, so here are the, the elements of blippy. What is the correct way to position, to, uh, to uh, so index the position, I should say, index the positions of three, seven, and 12 in a single line of code? Okay, so give it a, give it a shot here. What's the correct way to index positions three, seven, and 12 in the vector blippy? Is it blippy? Um, parentheses, three, seven, 12. Is it blippy C? Parentheses C, parentheses, 3712. Is it blippy square brackets, 3712? Or is it blippy square brackets C, 3712? What do you think? Pause the video if you need to. If you want to work them out, you can guess. Uh, or if you'd like to work them all out, that's fine too. Put them in R. Or if you're going to get is an error. OK, so let's see. This is the correct answer, okay? So let's let's discuss these other answers though, because I think it's kind of important to to understand why this is the correct answer, not just that you know you can probably put it in and see that it works, okay? Um, so why don't A, B, and C work? Explain why. Okay, um, and then write the code, multiply each position in Blippi by number ten. Okay, so I think everybody can do this, but let's go through here. Remember how I said uh, to be careful about these? Uh, first of all, uh, you can see that this is basically repeated. These A and B have uh, uh, of, um, parentheses and these have square brackets. We know that square brackets is the correct answer, right? Because if you do this, blippy, well, if I, if I had blippy there, uh, but I can do a blop, if I do blop, with element one, it's gonna try to find the function blop. It's gonna try to find the function blippy because that's what you're telling me. I wanna use the, the function blippy with these arguments in it, right? So be careful, uh, don't use parentheses here unless you're calling, calling a function, right? So we already know we've narrowed it down to C and D. Um, in terms of C and D, uh, if you want to do three, seven, and 12, what you're saying, this is index indexing a specific, and we'll talk more about this when we do arrays and data frames and stuff like this, but this is indexing um, one of the dimensions. And of course, we, we know that vectors only have one dimension, right, with a bunch of elements, um, but matrices do have two, and arrays can have three or more, okay? So what you're saying is I'd like, um, I'd like dimension one to be three, dimension two to be seven, and dimension three to be 12. And so if you do that, and we're gonna do it on blop, of course. So three, we'll do three, seven, and nine. Um, what you're gonna say is it's gonna give you an error of incorrect number of dimensions, right? And this is, this is a little, uh, uh, again, it's because it only knows this is dimension one, dimension two, dimension three, right? And it says, oh, since blop is only one dimension, why are you giving me three? like three dimensional, I don't know what to do, so error. You have to concatenate those into a, uh, a single vector, which is giving you the positions three, seven, 12 within this first dimension, okay? So that's really important. So if we go back up and we say, okay, well, you know, if I give you a vector three, seven, what do you feel? Uh, are, you, are you happier with it? She's like, oh yeah, third position, seventh position, ninth position. 
yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Okay, so be aware that when you're referencing or when you're uh, indexing stuff, uh, you have to give it one dimension, especially a vector, you have to give this one dimension, but um, in, all the stuff that you want to index in that dimension, uh, just put it in its own little vector so that R is happy. Okay, so that's number two, uh, and then write code. I, I think this is, this is pretty easy, so go ahead and do that. But yeah, um, I don't have any action items this time. Uh, I think the action items for class are going to be go ahead and do the assignment that's um, associated with this and uh, read for the next um, the next lecture. So that's it for me. Uh, I hope that that was enjoyable and fun, um, or at least maybe you understand why you're getting some errors, uh, which is always good. Uh, learning is better. Remember not to get too frustrated with doing this because, again, frustration is not going to be useful for you. It's good to work through frustration in terms of um, if you feel like you can get it done, getting it done and having that like rush of, yes, I'm the, I can do anything uh, because I got this thing R to work. That's really good. But if you find yourself, again, getting so frustrated that you are upset or you're starting to hate it or something like that, just put it aside, come back to it you know, uh, be aware of your emotional state as you code, because that's going to help train you classically, like Pavlovian conditioning um, uh, to, to dislike R. Uh, I would say, you know, get some treats, get some candy, get a nice coffee or something, you know, whatever you enjoy. That's what you should be sit down and enjoying while you do R and doing these nice little exercises so that you can understand what's going on. Um, but yeah, and uh, keep coding, keep going, and I'll see you next time.